Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to address the concept of mutually exclusive events. So what are they? Well, we have a definition for you. Mutually exclusive events are events that are defined in such a way that the occurrence of one precludes the occurrence of the other. And what does that mean, precludes? Well, it means if one of them happens, the other one cannot happen. All right, so we need to see some examples of that. So as an example, let's say we have a small college with 140 full-time students and 60 part-time students. Of the 140 full-time students, 80 are female, 60 are male. Of the part-time students, 40 are female and 20 are male. So what are some examples of mutually exclusive events and what are some examples of not mutually exclusive events? Well, for example, Let's say that event A is that it's a part-time student and event B is that it's a full-time student. You cannot at the same time be a part-time and a full-time student. So those are what we call mutually exclusive events. And so we have it in a Venn diagram where we have a circle representing the part-time students, a circle representing the full-time students. And therefore we can see that there's a total of part-time students that would be uh, 60. So there's 60 in the part-time students and there's 140 i believe yes 140 in the full-time students and notice there's zero in any other category there's no other event because 60 plus 140 gives you the entire student body of that college how about females and males in this particular college there are a total of 100 and let's see 80 plus 40 120 females and 80 males again in this college you cannot be both female and male so therefore female accounts for 120 and males account for 80 and there's zero in the rest of the box because that includes the entire student body but what if we have such a, a division of events event a being part-time event b being male it is possible to be part-time and male in this particular college. So how would we divide that? Well, in a Venn diagram, we have a circle representing part-time students, we have a circle representing male students, but they overlap because there's a, a number of students that can be both part-time and male. So how many part-time students are there? There are a total of 60 part-time students, but 20 of them are male. So in the rest of the circle where there's no overlap, we can only put the part-time students that are not male. So in this case, that would be the female students. So there would be 40 that fall into this category. Part-time and male, there are 20 that are both part-time and male. So there would be 20 in the overlap. And how many total students are male? Well, we know there's a total of 80 males, but 20 of them are males and part-time. So that means the other 60 are males and full-time, not part-time. So that's how we have a division. 40, 20, and 60, that's a total of 120. That means there are 80 students that do not fall in either one of the two categories. Now we have event A being full-time and event B being female. So in this college, it is possible to be full-time and female at the same time. Now, how many total full-time students are there? There's a total of 140 full-time students, but only 80 of them are female. That means 60 of them are male. So in this part of the circle, we have 60 males that are full-time, and then the other 80 full-time students are female, because there's a total of 140. Yes, 140. So here, this overlap represents 80 students that are both full-time and female. How many total female students are there? There's 120 full-time, no, there's a total of 120 female students. 80 of them are part-time. That means the rest of them would be full-time. And does that, let's see here, uh, part-time, I should say. Uh, the rest of them are part-time. So 40 part-time students, uh, female students that go in here. So notice we have 60 plus 40 is 100 plus 80 is 180. That means there's 20 students left that are neither full-time students nor female students. That means they're part-time and male, and there's only 20 part-time and male students. So that's why the 20 goes over there. So you can see that in this case, we have 
mutually exclusive events. There's no overlap. You cannot be both at the same time. Here there are not mutually exclusive events because there is overlap. You can be both events at the same time. And that's the difference between mutually exclusive events and not mutually exclusive events. And that is how it's done.